Welcome back to the channel, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to discuss an article from Bounding into Comics today, and it deals with Zack Snyder, the Snyderverse, all that fun stuff. Monkeys, roll the footage. There he is. Hey guys, how you doing? How's everybody Good. here? Good. 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 Just a quick thing before we get started. I know that um, the on our on our um, donation page, we still have the Geeks and Gamers logo. I just want to say that I really um, we talked about this, and you know we're really not affiliated with Geeks and Gamers as far as I'm concerned. And I really just want to make that clear. And I also want to just say, um, you know, in, in light of recent events, I think we really, you know, if Justice League teaches us anything, it's about coming together. And we, there's no room for hate. Hello, and, uh, darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. Yeah, that, that oh, works. I like All right. That. Okay. All right, moving, moving on. Hey, what about Tula? Here we are, Bounding Into Comics, ladies and gentlemen. This came out this morning by J.B. Augustine. Big shout out to Bounding Into Comics. Let's move into this article, shall we? Earlier this week, we showed you the image of actor Wayne T. Carr as Jon Stewart visiting Bruce Wayne, Ben Affleck, to warn him about Darkseid's invasion, as well as Carr's call for Justice League sequels. <laughs> We also recently shared the position of YouTuber War Stew that the Snyderverse is slowly coming back. Why? 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 Which is a train he's been on for a while. He doesn't think it will happen all at once, but he views Carr's tweet as a good sign. Everything is starting to fall into place, as he explains in one of his newest videos. I have no idea who War Stew is. I take it he's a bigger YouTuber. Whatever. I don't want to talk about that. Don't care. What I want to talk about is the fact that, okay, there was a few things in the Justice League movie it did better than Joss Whedon's theatrical cut, of course. I don't really care for Zack Snyder's style. I think he's a self-aggrandizing fuck. <laughs> Along the same lines as Darren Aronofsky, you know, people like that that make these movies so long because they're like, oh, look at me. Look at how much of an auteur I am. No, I, I didn't need a four-hour Justice League movie. I didn't. I didn't need a slow motion of Ezra Miller watching a hot dog go by his face. I, that was the happiest I think I've ever seen Ezra Miller. And I'll let you guess why. Bring out the gimp. Jon Stewart's Green Lantern, the inclusion of him in, in the Snyder Cut was much better because it, he should have been in the original lineup for the Justice League, not Cryborg. Uh, I don't care about Ray Fisher, uh, whatever. We've done some videos on him in the past. You know, he complained about the Joss Whedon treatment of him on set, said it was abuse. He had that whole thing with Warner Brothers. I, I don't, I don't care. I, I just, the whole Snyderverse, I, I would just like to pick up the rug and get the proverbial broom out and sweep it underneath. That would be absolutely ideal. War Stu believes the full scene with Carr and Affleck will be released as soon as the image of Carr itself affirms. Moves are being made behind the scenes to make Justice League 2 and 3, even if it has to be done back to... Now comes the part where we throw our heads back and laugh. Ready? Ready! <laughs> you don't know who your Batman is. You don't know who your Joker is. You, you don't know what the hell's going on with Flash. Is he... Yeah. Uh, it, it's... This is a joke. This is a complete joke. Um, you know, they have no idea who Superman is over there. And as critical as I am of Marvel, uh, DC has always been a hot mess. You know, that's the problem with them. With this, the start of the quote-unquote Snyderverse in 2013 with Man of Steel, you know, you have an asshole who has no idea who Superman is or what he represents. And it's just, Superman is not this dark color palette type character that doesn't work the christopher reeves superman is what superman embodies i don't need to see superman be uh anything other than what he's intended to be a beacon of hope uh, a symbol of truth justice and the american way not this whole new hey it's not superman anymore it's jonathan kent and guess what jonathan kent wears a fucking mask and protests for shut up 
Shut the fuck up. That's why I don't read mainstream comics anymore. Like I said, I, I don't read anything comics that, you know, I, I bought some in the last, what? I haven't bought any new uh, books in uh, like a year. But the last one I did, like I said, um, it was a, a low, I got a three pack of Marvel books. There was a Loki book written by Daniel Kibblesmith, which promptly got thrown in the box. And I'll never read it. I did go to a Comic Con, you know, bought some classic Captain America, some classic Spider Man, uh, good stuff, not written by idiots. And spare me the politics of always spotting comics. These I, I, I'm aware, I'm aware, but they also didn't hit you over the head with the force of a truck. Kind of, and if you listen, go back to even Stan Lee. I know we're talking about Warner Brothers, but if you go back to Stan Lee and what he said about, you know, putting the message in, but being subtle with it as to not alienate any potential readers morons now that's the problem with the people that write now is there's not enough talent to facilitate that kind of subtlety you know they think it has to be out front or else because i'm an ally that, that whole thing i'm an ally and if you're not you're a bigot you know no no i, I got called a bigot on twitter today and you know what i did nothing i i smiled because the person that called me a bigot is actually a bigot and they blocked me, of course, because they knew I was right, which usually happens when, when you're right and you argue with somebody and they keep coming back with, you're a bigot, you're a this, you're a that. And I simply just state a fact. <laughs> That's when you get blocked. And, you know, it, it, was, it was just really funny to see that reaction. It's always fun to get that reaction from some heifer on Twitter who wants to argue with me. It's it's beautiful, I love it. The Flash could be the biggest stumbling block, but the film was delayed yet again to finish VFX and perform some rumored reshoots. Thus, Wartsu thinks Warner Media's new regime is preemptively getting around Andy Muschietti and the studio rebooting DCEU. The whole nightmare sequence, nightmare reality, whatever you're gonna call it at the end of Justice League, I might be wrong. If I am, correct me in the comments. Like I said, I don't read I don't read the comics. I, I don't care. I have people talk, well, you just don't know the comics. Oh, and, and then you want to accuse people like me of gatekeeping. From what he hears, the alleged reshoots are going to rewrite half the movie and spare Batfleck from making the sacrifice to save the multiverse at the cost of his life. Instead, he will end up in the nightmare future set up for Justice League 2. Warner will then take advantage of Affleck while they have him available and make Justice League sequels simultaneously. Warner will then take advantage of Affleck while they have him available and make the Justice League sequels simultaneously. However, in a caveat, they'll, again, allegedly change their symbiotic story slightly from what Zack Snyder storyboarded and hitherto edified everywhere he went these last few years. Mainly, Warner will do this because they supposedly are adverse to making a trilogy where everyone already knows what happens from beginning to end. Warner chairman Toby Emmerich and Jason Killar, but War Stu already pointed out their contracts are coming up and as they each have one foot out the door, won't have any tenable power to provide a say in the matter. Good look at Joe Manganiello's death stroke. That's one thing that I did want to see that we didn't get was him in a full-on movie as Deathstroke. Discovery CEO David Zaslav is taking power very soon. His board is already appointed, and he has big plans for DC and Warner Brothers that won't be stopped. That's assuming, of course, he is listening to the Restore the Snyderverse movement. Which, again, I don't think listening to the Snyderverse sentiment is a good move for Warner Brothers. Their best bet right now, and they're in so deep they can't. They're, they're almost 10 years deep in the DCU, so they can't really turn around and reboot the whole thing now. No, they have to use the lazy writer's trope of the multiverse. Yes, I said lazy writer's trope. I still don't like the multiverse concept at all. The multiverse concept is simply a pass for lazy writing, and the Flash movie is going to be a hot mess, much the way that the Whedon cut was. From what it sounds like, if they're going to reshoot all this, there's no way that you have a movie that's almost in the can and you reshoot the whole thing and it comes out well. How'd that work out for Solo? You know, that didn't work out well. You know, Justice League was the same thing. It was a disjointed mess. Like you said, they had a two hour mandated runtime and Whedon's cut was exactly two hours. So Zack Snyder comes along and he's like, oh, well, what about all this lost footage? And here's, you know, 90% of it was garbage slow motion that we didn't need. You know, I didn't care about Cyborg's backstory because Cyborg is a Teen Titans character and nothing more. 
I can't think of Cyborg in any capacity other than Teen Titans Go with him, played by Kari Payton of Walking Dead fame. It doesn't work. Uh, much the way the Snyderverse does not work, will not work moving forward. There are certain characters he doesn't need to touch, like Aquaman. James Wan did a wonderful job with Aquaman. I'm not a huge Aquaman fan, but I did enjoy the first movie because it was so drastically different from the drab, dark, garbage tier stuff that Snyder does. And every movie Snyder does is exactly the same. Hey, here's a dark color palette that you can barely see. You know, that's that's what Zack Snyder does. He's so, like I said, he's, he's an auteur who thinks he's more talented than he is, you know. But who am I? I'm just some guy with a camera complaining about comic book movies. So it's your turn now. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, members will get thanked proper at the end of the video, but I'd like to thank all my channel members. Uh, say slap the like button. If you're not yet, subscribe to the channel. Uh, hit the bell for notifications so you know when we go live. Members content, more on the way. A lot more, ladies and gentlemen. I don't have time to talk about it all. I'm Etepo Queen of The Place to Be Reviews. I've been here with all of you. If I don't see you, have a great day, a pleasant tomorrow. I'll catch you on the next one. I could do this all day. It's better to burn out than to fade away.